And so this is a whole debacle, because number one, I have a, brought a throwing knife to the airport, right? <laughs> and then on top of that, my mom is standing right next to me, who has no idea that I have this throwing knife, bro. And I start freaking out. I was like, oh, shit. Like, like, obviously not out, out loud. But I remember just being like, oh, my God. I am. My mom is going to kill me if TSA does not kill me first and put me on some, like, terrorist watch list, bro. <laughs> What the fuck is up, Sarby Studios Podcast? It's your favorite degenerate. Look, I uploaded twice in a day. Starting the upload streak again. Um, I didn't even really talk about... Oh, wait, first off. I forgot to do this in my last podcast. I guess it wasn't really necessary, but um, can you guys make sure, like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, rate the podcast, all those things really helps me out if you can do that. And if you do do that already, I appreciate your existence hella. But, um... I wanted to say, uh, so I missed like three days of pod miss plus four, I think, um, including the, cause I didn't upload a podcast the first day of January, the, uh, excuse me, of December. I literally like thought about doing this like the second day of December when I uploaded a podcast. So, um, I think I will probably like make up those four all the way till like the 4th of January. And then I don't know what I want my, my podcast schedule to be um after that because i'd love to continue doing this um i think i'm going to try to do either twice a week and i would like to do something where i'm like doing single podcasts one day and then a like a have guests on for another day i just don't know how i'm going to do that because like i know a good amount of people in minnesota but like on the top of my head of people that i know that i'd like want to interview or like have on the podcast i think i have like five which i guess would only last me five weeks so i'm gonna have to do some some crazy ass networking and shit to try to get some good people on here but um merry christmas the day that this is going up it'll be christmas um i hope you guys get all the gifts that you want make sure to spend time with family friends etc um you know if you're you know doing doing the christmas thing i don't know like i'm my family isn't super, super religious, but we'll probably go to like church and stuff because my mom really values that stuff. So I don't know, just, just have a good Christmas. I hope you have a good Christmas, all that shit. Um, you know, make sure remember it's a time for giving as well. I actually personally prefer to give and stuff like that. So, um, make sure you're, you know, giving, giving as much as you can, not only to your family members, but also like if you can donate to a couple of charities and stuff like that, that's really good. I've been donating like here and there uh, to like the my buddies over at the Back Pocket Podcast. They did like a best Christmas ever where they raise money for a family that's just fallen on hard times. And I donated like 40 bucks to that. Like even just like little. Like if you can only donate five bucks, that's great. Like if you can give, that feels way better than getting. Getting is good too. I hope you guys got like good gifts and shit. I didn't really ask for much this for this Christmas. I asked for like a new pair of Vans because mine are really fucked. And then a Whoop Band. Cause I, I'd like to track my sleeping. I feel like I don't sleep well. Um, but other than that, I mean, my parents did give uh, like one of the best things my parents have ever, this is like the best idea that my mom's ever had was, or maybe it was my dad. I don't even remember. They opened me and my sister's an E-Trade account and put like a little bit of money in there, which is something I like, I think that's the best gift that you can give anybody. Not very many people will understand like the power of investing and how like, just starting as early as possible can can really make a huge difference in the long run once you're actually older and stuff so that was probably like the best gift my parents could have ever given me i would highly recommend like look into investing and stuff like that maybe next year ask like like once you understand like how important it is maybe next year just ask like hey like instead of buying me a 200 dollar you know christmas gift can you just give me 200 dollars and i'll throw it at an etf or something like that this is not financial advice by the way i have to say that or else i don't know somebody can sue me, I guess, but, um, I would definitely recommend investing in shit. Anyways, that's not what I want to talk about in today's podcast. Um, I just had to say Merry Christmas. It's like an obligation. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys the story of when I took a throwing knife to an airport. Um, <laughs> this is such a funny story because, um, just there's so many layers of like my mom didn't know I had the throwing knife and it was right in front of my mom and then like I was like really embarrassed I was like just throw it you know what? let me like let me like tell the story it's just way better if I tell you so okay so flashback I think I had to be in middle school because 
Um, I used to hang out with my boy, Jacob Thompson. Shout out Jacob Thompson. I, I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but I, I still love him. I hope he's doing well. I should actually text him, see, see what he's doing. Um, would hang out with him a lot. We used to skateboard. We used to airsoft. We used to do like a bunch of like, rent. did we airsoft actually? I want to say we did, but I honestly don't remember. Either way, we, we, we did a bunch of shenanigans and I can't remember if it was him or his friend, but either way, they owned a lot of like throwing knives and like firecrackers, things that like my parents were never like my parents were never big on me, like having firecrackers or like knives. But like, obviously, as a young kid, like especially as a young boy, like I was kind of obsessed with that stuff. Like we were obsessed with like like making our own bows and arrows and just like random shit like that. And so at one point, I don't even remember how it like came up or what happened, but my buddy Jacob was like, Hey, my neighbor has this throwing knife and he doesn't want it anymore. Would you buy it off of him? And I was like, fuck yeah, I'll buy it off of him. So I bought this like throwing. It honestly wasn't, it, it wasn't ex like, it wasn't a nice throwing knife by any means. It was just like a black, like completely black, you know, it had a, like a handle with little holes in it. And then, or no, no. How was it? Okay, so the like the throwing knife was missing because I think throwing knives are supposed to be like weighted more on the blade, so like you have more of a chance of like hitting the 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 blade side when you throw it at something. Um, but this one didn't have a weight. It had like a place that you could like put a weight on the blade, like you know screw one on. But I didn't. It didn't come with one. But like me as a little kid, like I was just happy to like have this throwing knife, right? And so it was great, right? Like we, I bought it and then I would bring it um, to my friends. Uh, house and i wonder if the backpack is in here actually hold on um maybe we got rid of it so i had this like old 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 backpack from when i was like younger i used it it, it was like a skateboarding backpack so it had like clips to clip your skateboard in because i used to be super obsessed with skateboarding that's what another thing that we used to do a lot we used to skateboard and um you know, I use it for school for a little while, but then I got a new backpack, but I always use this for sleepovers, right? So kind of my thing was that I would like, if I ever wanted to take this throwing knife, I just put it in uh, the small pocket of that backpack and I'd take it over to his house. And then like late at night when his mom was asleep, we'd like throw it at boxes or we'd throw it at like a piece of wood or like a tree in the back of his yard, whatever. Right. So it was, it was kind of fun. Well, at some point, I think I stopped hanging out with him like a lot, a lot. And I forgot to take the throwing knife out of this backpack. Right. And so I would use this backpack whenever I would travel during the summers. I always went to Moorhead, Minnesota to, uh, do a hockey camp. At, like my grandparents live in Moorhead. That's where my dad was born and not born. That was where my dad was raised. And, um, the, he knows like, like literally my, 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 my grandparents are super tight in that community. Like everybody knows my grandpa, John Sarbacher, like I'll literally go back and like meet some like 40 to 50 year old. And I'll tell them like, Oh, I'm Ben Sarbacher. And they're like, Oh, you're John Sarbacher's grandson. And I'm like, yeah. And he's, they, they, they'll always tell me stories. They're like, Oh, I remember one time I got hit in the face with a stick and I just went over to your grandpa's and he saved my parents like a thousand dollars in hospital bills by just stitching my, my gash up. And I like, like that stuff. And my grandpa was like the teen doctor for a while. Actually really cool thing. This is so ADHD off topic of me. I always like to call it out because like I recognize it, but like I have to talk about it now. My grandpa is actually, so they have this like main rink that like has been around like forever um, at in, in Moorhead, Minnesota, and they're expanding on it. And they were like taking don donors and donations. And so my dad and all of his brothers, they chipped in money to donate to like build it. And, um, they like, you know how like thing or places that take donations, they'll, um, put plaques up of like the donors or whatever they want. Um, they're naming one of the locker rooms after my grandpa. It's like John, Starbucker locker room or whatever. It's super cool. So cool. I can't wait to go there and like actually see the locker room. Like I'm going to take a picture by it and everything like, ah, oh, I love my grandpa. Anyways, back to the story. So usually I'll, or pretty much every summer I would go to Moorhead, Minnesota and do a hockey camp out there for an entire month. And so summer rolls around. Keep in mind, like I forget. I honestly like it's pretty, pretty irresponsible of me on it. But once again, I was like in middle school, pretty irresponsible of me. I had no idea where this throwing knife was. I thought like, Oh, maybe I left, you know, I didn't even think about checking the pocket where I normally 
put the knife to take to my friends. But I take this backpack and I start packing it with stuff, right? And so I just, you know, through through whatever I was taking over there, throwing knife is still in the bag. So we go to the airport. I have no clue, you know, whatever. And this was still like, I think I was at the age where my mom had to walk me through TSA and like see me off. I don't even remember if that was required or if my mom was just really controlling about it because I was pretty comfortable flying by myself at a very, very young age. I don't know if I was comfortable with it at that point. Either way, my mom was with me, right? She's going through TSA. She's not flying with me, but she's going through TSA with me. So, you know, I do my thing. I take off my coat. I take, I put my backpack there and you know, whatever they send it through and they're like, Hey, we have to check your backpack. And like, I've done little things like, Oh, I left a liquid in there, whatever. So I'm like, not really like, I'm just like, Oh, whatever. And so the TSA guy like pulls me and my mom aside and he was like, this is your bag. And I was like, yes. And he's like, do you know what you have in here? And I was like, uh, books, a laptop, I think like just like little things, whatever. So he starts going through the main pocket, whatever, doesn't find anything. And then he opens the little pocket and puts his hand in and pulls out my throwing knife. And so this is a whole debacle because number one, I have a, brought a throwing knife to the airport, right? <laughs> and then on top of that, my mom is standing right next to me who has no idea that I have this throwing knife, bro. And I start freaking out. I was like, oh, sh-. like, like, obviously not out, out loud. But I remember just being like, oh, my God, I am. My mom is going to kill me if TSA does not kill me first and put me on some like terrorist watch list, bro. <laughs> so he pulls it out. And my mom is he's like, oh, and I was like, oh, shit. And my mom's like what is that benjamin and i was just like oh that's a throwing knife that i bought from jacob thompson like blah, blah, blah. whatever and this guy's standing there like you fucking idiot like how did you do this <laughs> like the tsa guy and so my mom's like rolling actually my mom didn't have as bad of a reaction as i thought like i thought she was like i thought i was gonna get reamed and like an ass whooping my mom actually was pretty chill about it she was just like ah boys are boys like blah. and so um the guy was like the guy was like, oh, you know, we can, I forgot what he said. He's like, we have to keep it to process it, but like, we can send it back to you. And so I'm like, no, 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 throw that thing away. It's fine. I'm fine. I have like, whatever. And my mom was like, try, my mom was like, oh no, like, here's our address. You can send it back to us. And I was like, what the fuck, Kathy? Like, what? <laughs> what? And so, um, I, I, they ended up just being like, all right, just like, let's check the rest of your back. Like we, they were like, we know it wasn't malicious or whatever. Like, I, you know, me as a sixth grader, I'm not like whatever. And so they, they, you know, they took it. They gave me my bag. I was able to get on the flight. I don't think my mom chewed me out too hard. If she did, I feel like I would remember it, but she probably was like, you idiot. Like, what were you doing? Like, why did you have that? Like, why did you bring it to the airport? And I had to explain myself. Um, but I go to Minnesota. This is kind of how it ends. I go to Minnesota and then I come back and then sometime during the summer, they sent it back to my mom. Right. And at the time, my mom just kind of gave it to me and she's like, she's like, I'll let you keep it. Like what? I don't even remember why she let me keep it, bro. I still have it somewhere. You know what? I wonder, I don't know, bro. I have like a bunch of random shit in this house. I, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it is. But if I find it, maybe if I find it, because I have to go through these boxes eventually, I'll bring it on the podcast and like show you guys like this is the knife. But it, somehow I got it back, right? Because they sent it back to my mom, whatever. And she was like, don't be a fucking idiot about it. Like, I get it. Like, you're a boy. You want it. Like, be safe with it. If you hurt anybody with this, I will kill you. Like, basically, that's what my mom was like. And I was like, oh, oh okay. Like, whatever. And so, um later on i figure out my mom's actually a homie for this so they sent it back to her but there's a fine so if you bring something try to bring something through tsa or i don't know if this is the case with everything but at least with this knife like them having to send it back they like sent a fine to my mom and it was like 200 bucks like they were like yeah like you know we have to find people for bringing this shit over and i 
I don't know. To this day, my mom, like, I didn't even know about it until I was telling some friends at like a family dinner. And my mom was like, oh, but you forgot the part about me having to spend $200 for the fine. And I was like, what fine? And so she told me that like, apparently the TSA was like, hey, bro, pay us 200 bucks, like whatever. So moral of this story, um, don't bring a throwing knife to the airport. 10 out of 10 would not recommend that. Not very cash money to do that because they don't like that i feel like they'd be even more strict now bro like they get so mad about everything oh dude one time this is so off topic um i this is probably still one of the funniest things ever one time uh i was going i was when i played hockey we would travel i play like travel hockey so we would go on like weekend tournaments whatever i don't even remember where we were going but i was going with two of my teammates eddie and sam and we're going through tsa we get through our bags get cleared whatever and Sam turns to Eddie and he goes, hey, congrats, Eddie. You don't have a bomb on you. And one of the TSA ladies who is right next to us was like chewed him out. She's like, no, you do not say that. You will never say that ever again. And like scared the absolute piss out of this. I think we had to be like 14 or 15. When did I play for mission? Actually, that's a good question. Ooh, I don't know. We had to be like, was that freshman year? I think that would be either eighth grade or freshman year. So we were like 13, 14, 15. I don't know, somewhere around that range. But she was just reaming him, just letting it rip on this, like, little. And he was mortified. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> So yeah, don't do anything bad at TSA. They do not appreciate that at all. Um, so yeah, that's my little story today, guys. Don't, don't be stupid like me and bring a throwing knife to the airport. Um, yeah, I, I literally, like, I, like I talked about this. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the story. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you did. I'm honestly like, fuck it. I just told it. It is what it, it is. What it is. So, um, but if you guys want to hear anything specific, make sure drop in the comments, DM me, whatever you guys want to talk, want me to talk about. I'll pretty much talk about, I'm, I'm pretty much an open book unless it's like super uncomfortable for me to talk about. I can, or I won't, excuse me. So, um, but that's like very like, it had to be super personal for me. Now, I'm pretty much an open book. So, thank you guys so much. Do all those things that help me out. And I will talk to you guys when I decide to hit the record button again. Bleh. Enjoy Christmas.